Hello, uh, everyone. It is my pleasure to introduce my colleague, Professor Nathan Kaplan. Hello, Nathan. Hi. Hi. So, Nathan, we would like to learn a little bit more about you and your research. Can you tell us, please, what your area of research is? Yeah, so my research is primarily in number theory. And within number theory, I particularly like problems where you try to count things, like solutions to different kinds of equations or matrices with special properties, um, all sorts of things like that. Why do you find this field particularly? Why are you passionate about number theory? So what do you like about these problems of counting? And uh... Yeah, one thing that I like quite a lot is that uh, a lot of the problems that I work on are motivated by like concrete examples. So maybe you want to prove something about some big class of equations, some infinite family of curves, something like that. Well, you can just write down one polynomial and say, what happens in this example? Like, what are all the solutions to this equation? And then you do one example and you do another and you do another. And then all of you do like a million. I do a lot of um, computations with a computer in my work. So uh, one thing I'll do is like use the computer as a kind of conjecture machine where I have some idea of what's going on and I collect a bunch of data and then try to like find the underlying pattern that's making the data look this way. So uh, yeah, it's the same kind of thing that drew me to math when I was a kid, like puzzles, patterns, things like that. Like I just like the um, trying to figure out like what's really going on. Wonderful. And I'm, I'm curious, so number theory is a, quite an old and ancient field, right? And so how have uh, the tools for uh, making progress in research in number theory evolved uh, over the centuries? You say, for example, you are exploring things with computers, right? And uh, yeah, that's a great question. So uh, yeah, oh, that is a, that's a really good question. So one thing that's really neat about number theory is that it sort of spans the history of mathematics. So there are problems that people think about now that the ancient Greeks thought about thousands of years ago. So um, now, of course, we have all of this, like uh, all these things that have been developed in the, in the interim, and we have these amazing computational resources too. So um, yeah, I guess I'll give an example of the kind of thing I have in mind. If you think about uh, an equation like x squared plus y squared equals one, then you graph that in the uh, x, y plane, like uh, Cartesian geometry, which is not something um, that even like the ancient Greeks had way back when, but okay. So you graph it and you get a circle of radius one. And you could ask for all of the points on that circle where x and y are both integers. And you can see pretty easily that there should only be four of these points, like zero and plus or minus one and plus or minus one or zero. But you could also ask for like not just integer points, but maybe x and y could be rational numbers. So ratios of two integers. And you get all these extra points, like 3 fifths squared plus 4 fifths squared also equals one. And if you clear the denominators in that equation, the reason why that holds is that three squared plus four squared equals five squared. You have a right triangle with sides three, four, and five. And these Pythagorean triples give you points on this circle with rational number coordinates. So you could ask, are there infinitely many of these points? Are there only finitely many? If there are infinitely many, how can we understand this collection of points? And this is something that we understand perfectly well, like classification of Pythagorean triples. And there's this really nice interplay between the geometry of the situation and then the algebraic thing that's going on in the background. So now going back to your question, like one of the things that's really developed is using ideas from geometry to solve problems in algebra and using ideas from algebra to solve problems in geometry. So the, the interconnectedness here. But the kind of thing that I think about now is what if you change this story just a little bit? And instead of looking at like x squared plus y squared equals one, you raise one of the exponents. So you look at something like y squared equals x cubed plus one. Are there infinitely many rational number solutions, only finitely many? If there are infinitely many, how do you describe them? Turns out finitely many. 
But if you change that plus one to another number, sometimes you get infinitely many. Y squared equals X cubed plus five. So the kind of thing that I think about is as you vary through a family of equations like this, what's the more common of these possibilities? Yeah, and, and that's the kind of thing where you can do lots of experiments with computers. There are awesome connections to even things from analysis, this like um, connections between what are called elliptic curves and modular forms. And this is a, a body of techniques in number theory that very, very much did not exist 2000 years ago, so. Beautiful. Yeah. It's a, such a fascinating theory. And uh, it, Nathan, do you have advice for students who are interested in perhaps, uh, you know, our undergraduates who are interested in finding a job in industry? Is that useful to study number theory for an industry career? And in what ways? Yeah, so um, one thing that I'll say is uh, there are places where number theory feels like this very pure area of pure mathematics, but it also touches on things that are useful in the real world. Like one aspect of my research is uh, I do a lot of things that are on the boundary of number theory, geometry, and the theory of error correcting codes for like data transmission over the internet or whatever. So coding theory is like a real area of practical importance that involves ideas from these very like abstract number theory, geometric uh, fields. So that's one. Cryptography is certainly another. I mean, there are mathematicians who work on problems in cryptography in industry, either for the government or for private companies, where uh, a lot of the ideas are coming from algebra and number theory. A lot of the systems that we use for security and to communicate come from these algebraic directions. But another thing that I would say is that maybe you're not going to be a coding theorist or a cryptographer, but still the idea behind some of what goes into algebra and number theory, this idea of like trying to classify things and understand what is the, the underlying reason that the outputs of certain equations look a certain way, that the data is suggesting this happens or that happens. That process of making conjectures, finding patterns, that's the kind of thing that you do in all sorts of industry jobs where you work with data or you want to model something or understand some kind of system. So even if you're never using Galois theory at your job, I still think that you're developing a useful set of skills through the process of like learning the algebraic way of thinking. That's awesome. And uh, what about uh, advice for students who instead uh, are thinking about going to graduate school and perhaps entering the field of number theory? As yeah, so um, I've now done graduate admissions a bunch of times. And I can say that there are a few key things that um, graduate schools are really looking for in applicants. One is that you have uh, strong grades in the most challenging courses available to you. So really challenging yourself and taking um, some advanced courses and getting a view of like what, what it looks like to go beyond the standard curriculum of things that you have to take. Maybe you wanna challenge yourself and take an honors course or maybe even a graduate course while you're an undergrad. Another thing that I think is maybe the most important thing is to have strong letters of recommendation from professors who know you well. So lots of students really, uh, at, you know, who wanna go on to graduate school, like really do well in their courses, but it's really important to have mentors, not just for getting into graduate school, but also to give you advice and help you along your academic journey, but somebody who can write you a letter that says, I know this student well, they're creative, they're a great problem solver, they work hard, and I think that they would do well in XYZ type of a program. So I know it can be intimidating, but I definitely recommend go to office hours. Even if you know how to do the homework by yourself on your own, talk to your professors, find out what they think, see if they have suggestions for you for things you could do outside of class or, you know, like people love to give advice. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, that's a big, 
That's a big Thank one. you, Nathan. And I guess as a last question, can you think back of yourself as a college student? At some point, did you ever wonder what am I gonna do with my life? Am I gonna go find a job after I graduate from college? Or, or did you always know you wanted to do graduate school? And how was that choice for you? That's a great question. So um, I was really fortunate in that I got to take a lot of advanced math early. Uh, like even um, like at the end of high school, I got to take some more advanced courses and I always thought like, oh, this is so exciting. I really like this stuff, but I don't actually know what it's like to be a researcher in math. Like grad school, it's all about producing new mathematics. And that's not something I had done before. Before I had just solved a bunch of problem sets, taken a bunch of tests. So I was really fortunate that during undergrad, I got the opportunity to get involved in undergraduate research very early on. So each of the summers in college, I went to an NSF sponsored REU program and I got to work on problems in algebra and number theory, combinatorics. And after the first summer, it was like, this is great. I really love working on this problem. I really love this style of job, you know, like having a job where you think and you sit around and like try to solve a new thing all day. Like at that point, I became pretty sure that I really wanted to pursue graduate school. So what I would recommend is try to see if there are undergraduate research opportunities available to you. So the NSF REU program is really great. There are these sites that are all over the country. Um, you can apply and go and work on research problems. It doesn't necessarily have to be in your particular field. There are lots of opportunities in all sorts of mathematical fields. And even if you think you want to study number theory, doing an REU project in topology would teach you something about the experience of being in grad school and what math grad school is like. That being said, these programs are now very competitive, like lots and lots of students want to do them. So there are also programs uh, locally at, at um, UCI, there are professors who integrate undergrads into their research program. So that's another reason to go to office hours, talk to your professors, say, you know, like I'm really interested in these kinds of things. Do you think there are opportunities for me to get involved in a research project while I'm on campus here? Wonderful. Thank you so much, Nathan. It was such a pleasure to get to know you and talk to you a little bit more. Yeah, thank, thank you for you. talking with me. And I'll say also, I'm very open to um, emailing with students. If you have questions about any of this kind of stuff, um, send me an email. I'm happy to talk with you. Thank you so much. I'm sure there are going to be a lot of students that uh, will do that and follow up with you. Sounds Thanks good. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay, wonderful. Great. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. So awesome. Thank I, you. I hope to be in touch soon. I don't know. Uh, I'll maybe I'll see you at a faculty I, meeting or something. I, but. Very happy you'll be our neighbor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, and good luck with the event today. Thank you. Thank you, All Nathan. Right. Yes, Bye. say hi to everyone for me. Bye. Bye.